I appreciated the opportunity to come to Flint. Um, we had two different meetings. We had a smaller meeting with a number of people involved in public safety and criminal justice in the community. Um, I want to reinforce our commitment to support the Flint community in being successful and improving public safety in Flint. I was proud to have the state police join that effort this last summer. Um, we're going to continue that. We're going to try to find ways to do even more to improve that situation here. The other meeting was a broader community meeting, and it was a good discussion. It was really an opportunity to say, how can we work together? How can we do teamwork to really help reinvent Flint in a positive, constructive way? And the feedback was very good. Um, one thing I'm excited about is people in this community seem really interested in coming together, not talking about their differences, but how we're alike and how we have common problems to solve and solving problems with relentless positive action. So I encourage them to follow that philosophy, and we're going to do that in teamwork. So that's what I'd like to share with you, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Any specifics you can give us, Governor? Anything concrete that's going to happen next? Well, one of the things I did mention when I do the State of the State address is I'm going to talk about public safety. Um, and I hope to have a special message on that topic to really reinforce the need that we need to do better. For example, if you looked at the most violent crime list or a number of the crime lists, four communities in Michigan are on that list. Um, that's not acceptable. We need to do a better job. And so that's a topic I'm going to be discussing next year and asking for support from the legislature um, to make sure we can do a better job of getting those cities off that list and creating a better environment for all our citizens. So that was one of the topics. And then we had good questions and comments about you know, how to have the neighborhoods improve, how to find jobs for the structurally unemployed, a lot of good topics. What are you doing to help with some of the other, you know, those socioeconomic issues that are, are plaguing these cities that where there are emergency managers appointed, you know, like Flint and, and Benton Harbor and, and Pontiac, not necessarily just the financial issues, but other areas and other, other urban areas with a lot of people living in poverty? Yeah, well, that's one of the topics uh, I mentioned how we did a talent message recently, and we really focused in on um, our new talent portal mitalent.org, which is an opportunity to have kids, people looking for new careers, find opportunity um, where there really are jobs. We actually have a number of open jobs in Michigan, um, but in some cases we don't have the right skill matchup. So instead of just saying there's a job you can't get, this website tells people where they can go to potentially find those skills, um, what they might cost, how to find supporting resources to be successful. Um, because as we have jobs today, let's try to get those filled. And then at the same time, I also talked about how we want to help address the structurally unemployed, people that may not have basic literacy. How do we help them get that first job? And again, the government should be employing them, but how can we work with the private sector where they can have profitable enterprises to employ people with basic skills that then we can supplement so they can have a greater career path and an opportunity to move up and follow the American dream? So it's really creating that long-term path in partnership with the private sector, the nonprofit sector, and the public sector. Paul Herring, Spectacle Productions, as, as you go around the state and, and assess public safety issues around the state, where would you say Flint lands on the scale from 1 to 10? Well, Flint's one of the worst in terms of public safety. I mean, we know the facts there, and that's not appropriate. We need to do a better job, um, and we need to improve. And what I would say is, is we need more resources in terms of officers or law enforcement. We need to improve our criminal justice system in terms of how they get prosecuted, the jail system, and also the re-entry system. If we can help them from coming back again, that's a great answer. The other piece, though, is that's about the law enforcement, the criminal justice side. The other part that needs to complement that is the jobs question. The best long-term answer to crime is to have it so the crime never occurs. And the best way to have that happen, in many cases, is to have some family stability, the opportunity to have a job and a career. People are working for positive things rather than looking for ways that can get them in trouble. As you mentioned, there's multiple pieces to this puzzle, and, and one of them is jails. Is the state considering maybe opening up one of the old army bases to make a statewide facility to, to help alleviate the overcrowding in our jails? Uh, no, we're not looking at an option like that. Again, there are other options that we've been working with the Sheriff's Department here in Flint, um, some of the surrounding communities. Um, there are opportunities here that we should be looking at longer term, and that's part of the community discussion, to say in this particular community might, what might be better options to make sure um, we can follow through on that. We've improved, but we're going to improve more. Thank you. You said that we do need more officers and law enforcement. Um, what are some of the ways that have 
were talked about today to, to do that. Were there any? Well, I mentioned to them, again, this would be part of next year's message, without too many specifics, because I still need to roll that out, and we're developing those plans. But that will be part of the public safety message about how we can get a more law enforcement on the streets of communities that are in greatest need. But again, to complement that, it's more than just officers on the street. It's the criminal justice side and the job side. They're all pillars of this situation that need to come together and work together to create a long-term solution. Governor, a question for you. Uh, Representative Conyers, Hanson, and Peters apparently sent you a letter uh, saying that we have a concern. They have a concern, quote, the emergency manager law may be being disproportionately applied to disenfranchised people of color. Was that discussed today in the meetings? And any of you want to jump in, go right ahead. No, that wasn't discussed at all. That didn't come up as a topic. Um, and in fact, the atmosphere here in Flint is a positive one about working together. And I appreciate um, Mr. Brown stepping up to take on this role. And there seems to be good teamwork in the community. Because again, mayor, city council, emergency manager, um, people all talking about how they can solve problems rather than to say why we don't like something. I think this we've got a community here that's focused on solutions, which is great. I applaud their effort, and I hope they continue on that path. With respect to the letter itself, I just saw that yesterday. I'm happy to meet with um, people on that topic. So we'll follow up. Um, with the holidays, it could be difficult. But at some point in the future, I hope to sit down and have an open forum to discuss it. I'm happy to talk about um, Public Act for the Emergency Manager Act, because it's good legislation that improved on legislation that goes back to Governor Blanchard. I know it's difficult to put a specific date on, because I know you've said in the past that we'll only be in here as long as we, as long as the emergency manager needs to be here, and then we're going to get out. Um, it seems like it is, it's not going to be one size fits all. Benton Harbor's problems aren't Flip's problems, so you know we have to somewhat tailor make this. It's not a one size fits all. What specifically in Flint would you like to see before um, you'd like to hand the reins back over to um, to what they had before? Yeah, well, from a financial point of view, there's at least a couple criteria that I like to look at. One is, is from a short-term basis, is the, the city solid in terms of cash flow and opportunity so it can operate effectively day to day? The other one, though, that is important is there a structural solution in place? Um, because if you look at many of the problems we're talking about, these are not problems that happened overnight. Um, a lot of the, this is legacy issues that go back 40, 50, 60 years. And so the point here is, is I don't want to have situations where you can end up back in the status again. The real thing we want to focus on is let's solve the problem because it detracts from a lot of good things that can be going on in the community. And so let's focus on the good stuff. Let's solve the structural problems so then we can put all our energy on positive solutions and results that can make a great difference. And so that's what I would say is in terms of broad criteria, the short-term cash flow issue and a long-term structural solution and create that environment for success. What happens if um, the effort to repeal PA4 moves forward, and uh, what are you hoping will happen here in Flint if, if you know, whatever happens, happens? I mean, will it be suspended? Will we go back to PA72? And, and what does that mean for Flint? Yeah, well, there is an effort to put in a petition to have a referendum, and I respect the, the vote of the people. If it happens to end up on the ballot, we'll respect what happens next November. The real question is in the interim, how do you handle that? And to see it suspended or go out of action would not be a good thing, in my view, um, because we've got a lot of positive things in progress that, again, need to happen. And it's an unclear question totally, whether it's back to PA 72 or whether there's even something left. Um, so what I would say is in the interim, if it should occur, we need to seriously look at what we need to do to make sure we don't have more difficult situations and we can move forward until the people make a decision. We have time for about two more questions. Just in overall, how on a scale one to ten, how pleased are you with what's happening so far? What has happened? I like this. We're getting more metric oriented. Everybody <laughs> wants to actually grade things. I like measures and metrics. I started it. That's <laughs> good. Yeah, we got that trend going here. No, I think we're off to a very constructive start. And I, again, I applaud the city, the, the elected representatives from the city, about being constructive about the whole dialogue, the process. This is how you really solve things, that, that's coming together um, with Mr. Brown working together in teamwork. Because it's not about just who has the ball. Again, this shouldn't be a personalized thing. This is about a community and a state being a supporting resource to all come together to say, we have a crisis, we have an emergency, let's solve the problem, let's get out of that problem, and let's get on relentless positive action to having a great city again. Who all did you meet with today? 
talk, all the constituents that you talked to today? Was it police groups, community groups? Talk about all those who you met with today. Yeah, it was a very broad-based group, and I think a number of them are still around. I'm sure you may have an opportunity to grab some of them and get their perspective. Um, but it was, a, again, the idea was, is I wanted to come, because too often people have this idea that where's the city, where's the state? Very simple approach, we're people. So I thought the best answer is just to have people talk to people. So that's why I like the idea of coming up here and having one on public safety because that is a critically important issue. One on the general community and, hey, let's talk. And let's solve problems together and let's be relentless about it. I have a question for Mr. Brown. How good is the news? You've been, in, uh, you've been downtown for a couple of weeks now. How's it look? Uh, it looks over. <laughs> but in, in all seriousness, it, there's lots of issues to address. We're putting together a plan, uh, as we're charged to do in 45 days. Uh, that plan will focus on finances, uh, infrastructure, and uh, public safety. And if we believe if we can make progress in all three of those areas, we're going to get the city on a path toward recovery and uh, prosperity.